Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this post-mortem of my Blitz game number 957. My opponent started off with uh, e4 and I went uh, with e5. And I have to say, uh, one of the joys of playing e4, e5, maybe maybe you always play the Sicilian or the French or the Karakhan or some other pet defense, but one of the joys of playing e4, e5 is you get <laughs> to experience all these wacky gambits. And uh, that's what we get in this game. So he starts out normally with knight f3. I go knight c6, and he goes bishop c4, so we've got an Italian game, bishop c5, and then he uncorks uh, d4, which uh, on Lee chess and also chess games, this was called the Rosentreter gambit. So I looked this up, uh, I was kind of curious about it. There is one game by Rosentreter in the database where um, he played something similar. He actually castled first and then played uh, d4, which is called the Deutz Gambit, at least on chessgames.com. But anyway, uh, so I was kind of curious who first played this. And uh, so in the database, the, the first time, and on chessgames.com, the first time this position was reached in this move order, this was played by uh, Frank Marshall, the great, uh, <laughs> great gambiteer. But I guess there's so many other gambits uh, named after Marshall that they couldn't name another one. So, so they gave this one to Rosentretter, even though uh, there's no evidence that, uh, that he ever played this. Anyway, yeah, check out uh, Rosentretter's game on chessgames.com. If you're interested, it was a short and uh, sweet uh, gambit win, so it was kind of cute. Anyway, uh, if you take with the e-pawn, which you see is the top choice there, let me point out something here. Uh, D4 is not a move that's in this uh, opening book database. You can see it's, it's rarely played. What happens after D4 and E takes D4, the top choice here, is uh, we've just transposed into a line of the Scotch Gambit. And this is playable for uh, black. White is, white is fine too. So if you're familiar with the Scotch Gambit from the black side and you like this line, I actually choose a different line because this one is kind of tricky. Uh, against the Scotch Gambit, but if you're familiar with that, then you can you can transpose that way into a line of the Scotch Gambit. Otherwise, uh, you have to decide how to take this pawn. Um, and the rule of thumb I use is is always take with the bishop because it's just a little more solid. And with the bishop defending the e pawn, it turns out I checked this out with the chess engine that uh, knight takes d4 is also playable in this particular position, but even the chess engine slightly prefers bishop takes d4. So you give up the bishop pair, but you're a pawn up, and uh, and white has some compensation, but probably not enough, although it can get interesting. Anyway, he took, so he grabbed the bishop pair, and I took back with the knight, and here he played c3, and at that point, we are really just out of the book. Um, and I looked at a couple of other lines here, the chess engine likes bishop e3, which was not in the opening book, but uh, it seems to be just a reasonable developing move and putting some pressure on that knight, maybe trying to inflict doubled pawns. Um, and uh, there was a line in the opening book that went like this with f4. <laughs> so uh, this is bad for white, at least uh, at first glance, but you have to know how to play against it. And it turns out the move here is uh, d5. And now he can't take the e-pawn because his bishop is hanging. So the best move here is e takes d5. And then the queen comes out with check. Typical kind of play in the, these uh, e4, e5 uh, gambit lines. He can play g3 here to kick the queen. The queen can go to h3. And uh, and the bishop can retreat to f1 to chase the queen away. But it seems like uh, black has an advantage in that position. Uh, anyway. That's how these gambits go. He played c3 and we're just out of the book, so we'll stay on this screen. Uh, from now on, uh, I just dropped the knight back and the chess engine likes black. Uh, so black is favored uh, for a while here. Let's see, he played knight a3. I go knight f6 is all normal. He castled and I castled probably a little too quickly. Um, I didn't really consider knight takes e4. And in fact, uh, it doesn't really, uh, it's not really particularly good here. Uh, he can play the best line according to the chess engine was from to sacrifice the bishop there and then play queen d5 check and get the knight back there and it leaves uh, white with an active position and, and black's king running around so that's uh, that's okay for white maybe a slight edge not not a huge win uh, so instead of grabbing right away the, the move here is h6 which stomps that pin and uh, 
and maybe you are at some point really threatening to uh, to take there. Although I guess that bishop uh, that bishop eight takes f7 trick would still work. Maybe after castling. Anyway, I castled right away, but then he just pinned the knight, and now um, uh, and now I really should play h6 here. Actually, I didn't didn't make a note of it here, but um, h6 puts the question to this bishop. Uh, if he drops back, I can play g5 and then just take the pawn. So that's that's the best move here. I played d6, so I'm I'm giving back some of that advantage that Black had earlier in the game. Let's see. He starts to bring his knight into the game. I go queen e7 here. He goes f4. In in all of these uh, positions, h6 was the preferred move, but uh, but now I play h6, and uh, it doesn't like this particularly here. Although uh, the lines it's suggesting now, are, it's, it's already starting to get a little bit tricky. I didn't want to open up the F file because the pressure there will result in some pawn damage. Um, the chess engine is not afraid. It would take. And, uh, and then it thinks, well, this is one possibility. Um, White could take with the rook. This is a way that uh, White could cause some pawn damage. Uh, Queen could uh, come out here to unpin the knight and then um, the bishop takes knight, queen takes rook. That's the point of putting the queen on e5. So if he wants to damage the pawns, which is not a bad idea, actually. This is still maybe playable for white. Um, he can do it this way, and then the bishop uh, can come in here. And uh, it's a little bit dangerous, but uh, white has sacrificed some material. And, uh, and with the active queen, this should be okay. At least the chess engine <laughs> prefers that for black. A bit tricky to play, particularly in a blitz game. Um, if if uh, black, instead of taking with the rook, were to take with the bishop here, then this is not a problem. The queen can actually grab the e-pawn there. So, um, so probably the most dangerous line is that rook takes line, followed by sacking the exchange on f6. Um, or another line here would be uh, just to reposition this bishop. It actually likes to have the bishop on this diagonal and also defend defend that pawn. So those seem to be okay uh, as responses to e takes f4, um, but leaving leaving black with an edge. After h6, it's actually quite dicey. Uh, white is maybe a little bit better uh, with bishop takes, queen takes, which is kind of what I was going for. I thought, oh, I'll just uh, take this way get rid of that uh, nasty bishop and I don't have to worry about my pawns being damaged over here. But uh, Chess Engine likes this for white. So anyway, he retreated the bishop, which uh, is a mistake because it allows the tactic that I uh, almost played in the game. I talked about it during the game. So let's go forward to that point. I could I could play it now. could just take there and then play, um, play g5, and that is good. Um, but uh, let's see. I went... Um, Bishop e6 here. He retreated his bishop to d3. Then I took. And I saw during the game that I could play this pawn forward and fork. In fact, I think I, I initially intended to play that. But as I looked at that position, well, once again, I was a little bit worried about the pawn damage around my king. And I settled on um, knight e5 instead, trying to uh, gain a tempo on this bishop and looking to fork the pieces here. But then he can just take take the uh, knight there and damage my pawns anyway. So so knight e5 was just a mistake, and I really should have gone ahead with this g5. And uh, let's see, there's a couple ways white can respond. Um, actually, the chess engine prefers giving up the exchange here and dropping the bishop back and says, uh, and black is basically an exchange up, so that's the way to play it. Um, let's see, after g5, I was thinking maybe he could take here, but... Um, you know, when I take back, he's got to move that rook, and it's got to uh, drop back. It doesn't have any safe squares. Oh, the fourth rank there can't come forward. So say it drops back here. If it goes to f2, the knight can come into g4 and continue to harass it. The chess engine was having it go all the way back to f1. So uh, so even though my pawn structure is a little bit weak here, um, this just seems to be good for black. I'm a whole piece up at this point. So. Uh, that's what I should have done. I should have gone with this uh, g5 fork that I had spotted <laughs> but didn't play. Anyway, I went knight e5 thinking I would come in here and fork those pieces that way and just forgetting about this. So uh, he takes there naturally and now I do have to suffer. 
<laughs> this is my punishment. Uh, let's see. So he plays knight e3. I come in with knight g6. Plays rook f3. Bring my king over to defend this pawn. And uh, let's see. The chess engine wants to continue here with uh, queen d2. That's an idea. Just starting to line up on this guy. Um, maybe bring the knight in somehow. It's hard to say actually how the knight is going to get in. That's it's a bit of a problem here, but it, it gives an edge to white in these positions. So, so my uh, big mistake there with knight e5 has uh, has turned the game around, and white's a little bit better pressing anyway. Um, the the best knight move it actually likes queen d2 the best. I didn't quite see the follow up there, but um, you know in terms of knight moves, which is kind of natural to bring the knight in, it actually likes putting the knight here instead. Uh, this once again forces an exchange because this is an attack on the queen and the pawn. I can't really let either of those go, so I have to take it. And then I can activate my queen. And then it says he should put his queen over here to c2. That gets the queen off the back rank. He can bring a rick over. He's got a very fast developing attack with uh, pressure. Uh, so it looks to be slightly good for white. Maybe not... Uh, Maybe not winning, but a slight edge, and uh, certainly, certainly uh, white can press the attack. So, uh, knight f5 seems to be a mistake, and now I'm okay once again. So it's it's a kind of a delicate balance here. I, I take naturally, he takes, and it just turns out I have a, a decent square for my knight, and it's even forking these pieces. So I have the opportunity to trade off that bishop if it becomes a threat. Although at the moment it's blocked out by the pawn, so it doesn't seem like it's that much of a threat. I'm more worried about the uh, the H file. He can very quickly get some pressure on the H file. I have to make sure I can handle this. So anyway, I started with Rook G8, and then when he played Queen H5, I played Knight to G4. I thought actually that was the only move. I wasn't seeing anything else, but it turns out uh, Queen F8, just defending this way, also works and uh, is an advantage for Black. So Black is just uh, better here. I guess because of the extra material and because the attack is not going anywhere. But this knight g4 move uh, was also the top choice. Those two were about equal, giving an advantage to uh, to black. And I kind of like it better now that I've seen both of them. It's it's more active, you know, and we have ideas of the knight controlling that um, f2 square and maybe setting up some back rank mate if uh, if uh, white gets careless. So So I think that's a good choice there. Let's see. And he went bishop e2. And of course, <laughs> I could just take that. <laughs> I totally, that was a blind spot. I didn't notice that uh, he was attacking my uh, rook. And I played, um, I mean, that my queen was attacking his bishop. And I, so I played my rook up, went rook g5. It's a move I had pre-calculated. I was thinking, you know, well, what can I do if he puts more pressure on the knight? And, uh, and then I saw I could uh, come and attack the queen. And so I just went through with that sequence. But of course, on every move, even in a blitz game, you should be able to notice <laughs> a hanging piece like that. So no excuses. Anyway, I went rip g5 there. He went uh, queen h4. He could actually have uh, tried to uh, take. But all of this is winning. Uh, let's see. He could uh, take here and then play on with the rook and bishop versus the queen. But uh, it's, a, it's a good position for me. I, uh, his, his other rook is out of play. It will come in. I guess they'll get into the game pretty quickly, but um, the game might last longer that way. Anyway, he dropped his queen back to uh, h4, and then I noticed his bishop was hanging here. <laughs> and um, let's see, what can he do here? He tried rook e1. Uh, to chase my queen away, I went over to c2, and then he played. Uh, what did he play? Oh, he played rook to g3. But uh, well, he's neglecting my counterplay here, so my queen and my knight are both concentrated on that f2 square, so I can check and uh, mate. That's a mate in two, uh, and uh, so yeah, he was just too focused on the attack, which sometimes happens to me as well. You're looking at your own attacking moves and not not looking to defend but uh, that was that was a point where uh, he needed to defend of course it was already lost at that point I guess it would have been lost um, let's see where, where did it actually become lost here well this knight f5 move 
changes the game so that black is better. And then uh, as we go through it, uh, looks like um, yeah, it looks like the the tech just isn't going anywhere. And um, rook g5, yeah, okay, yeah, bishop e2 was the losing move really. I mean, he's uh, uh, black is better here. But uh, because white's attack is not really uh, building up steam, it was kind of natural to try and reposition that bishop because it is blocked in by the uh, by the the pawn. Maybe he could have tried something like bishop to uh, c5 here to continue. But uh, black is only slightly better in this position, whereas after bishop e2, then from here on out, it is just winning. Even though I went with <laughs> rook g5 instead of taking it, I did eventually take it. And then the game continued like this there, and then the check, and he resigned. Anyway, it was an interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you again next time. Bye now.